If you're anything like your boy, you have an innate desire to get all the mounts. So I thought what better way to celebrate that desire than by making a video on how to get all the mounts. Before we start, this is a big video so if there are some errors let me know, I will put a pinned comment with all the new information below, however I double checked everything so error should be minimum. First off, we will be looking into the mounts that can be dropped from rares. Arboreal Gulper This mount drops from a rare in Ardenwild called Humongous. What you will need first is an item called an unusually large mushroom that can drop from any Ardenwild mob. After looting it, you got 20 minutes to get to the spawn location of Humongous. You will go to these coordinates and click on the damp loam, which will spawn the rare after some time and bam, you got your first mount. Spine Maw Glade Truer You will go to these coordinates in Ardenwild and kill the ranged guardians and bristlecone terrors. After a while, one random kill should spawn an NPC called Chompy. You pop Chompy off and then Gorm Tamer Tizo will spawn. You pop him off and he drops the spine mount glade trooper. Blisterback Blood Tusk This mount drops from Warbringer Malakorak at these coordinates in Maldraxxus in the Spire of War. Through the reins of the Kalo Fladewing, Chimeras around Maldraxxus have a chance to drop a blight touched egg. It will take 5 days to hatch and after it does you will get your mount. As of now it seems to be a 100% drop chance. Gore Spine Gore Spine simply drops from Nerissa the Heartless at these coordinates. Slime covered reins of the hulking death rock. This mount drops from the violent mistake. The rare itself is one of seven creations you can make at a little toxic pool in Maldraxxus at these coordinates. There are three different types of ooze you can find south of the pool. Viscous ooze, the red mobs, Misciple ooze from the yellow mobs and Mephitic goo from the blue mobs. To make this specific rare you will need to have the same amount of red and blue ooze but have more red and blue than the yellow so you can have 11 red, 11 blue and 8 yellow and that should be fine. Battlebound Warhound You will need to get to the Theater of Pain but the non-instant version of the Theater of Pain so it's not a dungeon, just the T.O.P. in the outside world. In the arena there are 4 different elites that can spawn every day and they have a chance to drop this mount for you. And Mire Flyer Tether. This mount drops from Famu the Infinite in Revenger. To get Famu to spawn, you will talk to Seeker Hilda at these coordinates, and after talking to her, you will have to fight a couple of waves of mobs before engaging the boss himself. It has a low drop rate, and you will need a raid group to down it as well. Also, if Hilda has no dialogue options for you, that means that Famu has been killed recently, and you will have to wait a bit. Loyal Gorger. At these coordinates in Revendorf, you will find the World Edge Gorger. What you will need from him is an item called an Impressionable Gorger Spawn. This item will spawn a little version of the mount who will run off. You will then go to the Endmire where the little guy will spawn and give you a quest. The first day, he will ask you to collect 18 Endmire Vinewood. After you do this, you come back the next day and you will have to collect 35 of the Endmire Vinewoods. On day 3 he will ask you to kill some mobs around Enmire for some fruits. On day 4 you will be doing the same thing just for more fruits. On day 5 he will require you to slay some end gorgers and dread gorgers, which you will have to do on day 6 as well just in a higher amount. And at day 7 you will have to slay the unbidden world eater who patrols around Enmire. And as a reward you will get your mount. Maasorn Soul Hunter now this mount is both a drop and a reputation mount in the sense that you will need to have at least ambivalent reputation with Venari in the Maw. You will also need to have the Beast Wardens in the Maw unlocked. This mount is only available during the hunt Shadow Hounds, which is one of the four hunts you can do in the Beast Warden depending on the week. You will have to kill 6 packs of mobs and then you can kill him at these coordinates. From various reports this mount can only be farmed once a week, sadly. So if you don't get it, you will have to wait a while. For the rare drop mounts, now it's time for the reputation mounts. Now these are probably the simplest to get, you will just have to pump your wrap up and you can easily get them. There are faction quartermasters in southern Oribos and they're all at the same spot. However, you won't get any reputation discounts, so I recommend just going to the zone of the faction proper. This is where the faction quartermasters in Oribos are, these are the coordinates, and I will show you the locations of the quartermasters in their respective zones when I list the mounts. Court Sin Runner. This mount is sold by Mistress Michaela in Darkhaven at these coordinates in Revengef. It requires you to have exalted status with the Court of the Harvesters. It will cost you 30,000 gold in Oribos and 24,000 gold with a discount in Revengef. Gilded Prowler. 
This mount requires you to be exalted with the Ascended and can be bought from Adjutant Nikos in Bastion for 24k gold at these coordinates or for 30k gold in Oribos. Lurid Blood Tusk Sold by Nalcom Talson in Maldraxxus at these coordinates for 20k gold or for 30k gold in Oribos. Requires exalted with the Undying Army. Dusk Flutter Arden Mouth Sold by Aethlin in Ardenwild, whose location depends if you're Nightfey or not. If you're Nightfey, she will be in the heart of the forest at these coordinates, and if you're not Nightfey, she will be at these coordinates in Ardenwild. She will sell you this mount for 24k gold and needs you to be exalted with the Wild Hunt. You can also get this mount in Oribos for 30k gold. Colossal Slaughter Mount This mount drops from the Paragon chest for the Undying Army. To get Paragon rewards, you will need to be exalted with your reputation first, and after that you can get additional 10,000 reputation and get rewarded with the chest. You can do this over and over again, and this mount can drop from the Undying Army Paragon chest. Amber Arden Mouth This mount drops from the Paragon chest for the Wild Hunt reputation. Now we will be taking a look at the Covenant mounts. First off, I will list the Kyrian mounts. Phalanx of Courage you get this mount after completing the chapter 3 of the Kyrian Covenant campaign. Eternal Phalanx of Courage. You will earn this mount after completing chapter 8 of the Kyrian Covenant campaign. Phalanx of Humility. This mount can be bought from the renowned vendor for 5000 anima and 100 grateful offerings, but you can also get it by channeling your anima conductor at level 1 to the Temple of Purity, though it's not a guaranteed drop. Phalanx of Purity. You will get this mount by getting to Renown level 23 with the Kyrian and it will cost you 5000 anima from the Renown Quartermaster in the Elysian Hold. Eternal Phalanx of Purity. You will get this mount by getting to Renown level 39 with the Kyrian and it will cost you 100 anima and 50 grateful offerings from the Renown Quartermaster in Elysian Hold. Phalanx of Loyalty. For this mount you will need to have a Path of Ascension in your Covenant Sanctum on tier 3 and you will need to have completed all the fights on Courage difficulty so that you can do the Mad Mortemire fight on Loyal difficulty. This mount is rewarded from beating him. Eternal Phalanx of Loyalty, sold by Binkiros, requires you to do the Death Forsworn achievement. Eternal Phalanx of Humility, sold by Binkiros, requires you to do the Learning from the Masters achievement. Binkiros is a vendor you will unlock after unlocking Path of Ascension. Now we will be taking a look at the Nightfey mounts. Dreamlight Runestag, rewarded for completing Nightfey Covenant Campaign Chapter 1. Enchanted Dreamlight Runestag will be rewarded to you after completing the Chapter 8 of the Nightfey Covenant Campaign. Wild Glimmer for Prowler drops from Wafir the Unrelating, which requires you to channel your Anima Conductor into Tirna site, or you can get it from the renowned Quartermaster for 5000 Anima and 100 Grateful Offerings. Shade Leaf Runestag, sold by Elvin at Renown 23 for 5000 Anima. Enchanted Shade Leaf Runestag, sold by Elvin at Renown level 39 for 100 Anima and 50 Grateful Offerings. Umbral Sighthorn, sold by Spinalnose at these coordinates for 2500 anima and requires you to be revered with Court of the Night, which is a reputation associated with the Night Fae. To get this mount you will have to be Night Fae, but you can get this reputation whether you are Night Fae or not. Winterborn Runestag, also sold by Spindlenose for 2500 anima. Wakener's Runestag. This mount requires the Queen Conservatory feature and requires planting a Divine Untamed Spirit which has a chance to give you the mount. Enchanted Wakener's Runestag, same thing as before, you need the Queen's Conservatory and requires planting a Divine Untamed Spirit which has a chance to give you the mount. Vibrant Flutterwing, for this mount you will need to have Tier 1 Transport Network as Nightfey and to unlock the Marasimus Rep, it's sold by their Quartermaster for 5000 anima. Enchanted Winterborn Runestag, also sold by the Quartermaster of the Marasimus Rep for 5000 anima. And now we'll be taking a look at the Ventir mounts. Crypt the Gargon, awarded from completing the Ventir Covenant Campaign Chapter 4. Battle Gargon Rednik, requires completing the Ventir Covenant Campaign Chapter 8. Hope Crusher Gargon, drops from Hope Crusher at these coordinates in Revengef, only for the Ventir players. Horrid Dreadwing, Venter Anima Conductor used on the Wayne Crypt Hill, drops from Harika the Horrid or bought from the renowned Quartermaster in Sinfall for 5000 Anima and 100 Grateful Offerings. Sinfall Gargon requires renown level 23 and is sold by the renowned Quartermaster for 5000 Anima. 
Gravestone Battle Armor Gargon requires Renown 39 and is sold by the Renown vendor for 100 anima and 50 grateful offerings. Desire's Battle Gargon requires you to be best friends with the Countess in the Ember Court. Celessa's Battle Harness you will get these from the mirror system chests in Revendreth at tier 3. You will be able to repair broken mirrors across Revendreth and enter them and you can get this mod from that. The Inquisition Gargon. This mod requires you to be exalted with the Awaud and it will cost you 2000 Sinstone Fragments. Next up we'll be taking a look at the Necrolord mounts. Warbred Taralis, which you will get after completing the Necrolord Covenant Campaign Chapter 2. Armored Warbred Taralis, you will get this mount after completing the Chapter 8 of the Necrolord Covenant Campaign. Predatory Plague Rock, drops on Geiger which requires you to channel your Anima Conductor into the House of Constructs so it can be summoned. Bone Hoof Taralis, drops on Tahota at these coordinates. So far it seems this mount only drops for the Necrolords which is why I listed it here. Armored Bone Hoof Tauralis requires a Necrolord member to channel their Anima Conductor into the Theater of Pain or you can buy it for 5000 Anima and 100 Grateful Offerings. Bone Cleaver Skullbore drops from Sabriel the Bone Cleaver who is one of the elites in Theater of Pain, the outside version. Plague Rod Tauralis requires Renown 23 with the Necrolords, sold for 5000 Anima from the Renown Quartermaster. Armored Plague Rod Tauralis requires Renown level 39 and you can buy it from the Renown Quartermaster for 100 Anima and 50 Grateful Offerings. Bone Sue Flesh Rock requires you to have Abomination Stitching on final tier and it will cost you 50 malleable flesh and superior parts. Chosen Tauralis You get this mount from the Gang's All Here achievement which will require you to build constructs with Abominable Stitching with the Necrolords. Armored Chosen Tauralis for this mount you will need the things to do when you're dead achievement, which requires you to get 4 different achievements including the one you need to get for the last mount. This achievement will also give you the abominable title. There are 4 mounts you can get from different covenant features, so you can get them all from one covenant feature. So for example you can get all 4 of them from the Amber Court if you're Rentier or from the Queen's Conservatory if you're Nightway and so on. Dauntless Duskrunner. For Kyrian it's sold by Binkiros for 2500 anima but requires you to have the Disciple of Humility achievement. For Necrolords it's sold by Atticus in the Abomination Factory for 5000 anima. For Nightfay you will need to plant a Divine Dutiful Spirit for a chance at the mount and for Deventhyr you will need to be exalted with the Ember Court and 2500 anima. Gruesome Flayedwing. For the Kyrian you will need all colors in the Pain Bow achievement plus 2500 anima. For the Necrolord you will just go to the Abomination Factory and buy it from Atticus for 5000 anima. Nightfay you will need to be planting a Divine Martial Spirit at the Queen's Conservatory and for the Venthyr you will need to be exalted with the Ember Court and 2500 anima. Pale Acid Ma. For Kyrian you will need the Bear Necessities achievement plus 2500 anima. For Necrolords you will buy it from Atticus for 5000 anima. Nightfay will require planting a Divine Untamed Spirit in the Queen's Conservatory and for the Venthyr you will again need 2500 anima and to be exalted with the Ember Court. Silver Tip Dreadwing. For Kyrian you will need Curse of the Thirst achievement plus 2500 anima. For the Necrolords you will buy it from Atticus for 5000 anima. For the Nightfay you will plant a Divine Prideful Spirit at the Queen's Conservatory and for the Venthyr you will need to be exalted with the Ember Court and 2500 anima. There are three Callings mounts you can get, Bulbos, Infested and the Pestilent Necro Rays. All three of these have a chance to drop from a Necroway Egg which takes three days to hatch. You get these from Tributes of the Ambitious and Tributes of the Duty Bound, which you get from Callings in Maldraxxus as well as doing Ma and Torghast quests if you're a Necrolord. Next up we got four Adventure mounts, Chittering Anemite, Dark Warren Shell, Highwind Dark Main and War Stitch Dark Hound, which you can get from the campaigns on your adventure table. There are 4 dungeon mounts we can get so far. Marofang's Reigns, drop from Nalthor the Rhymebinder, the last boss from Necrotic Wake on Mythic difficulty, but it's also been reported to have dropped from Mythic Plus. Slime Serpent, by all accounts we still don't know how to get this mount, all we know is that it comes from Plaguefall. Keep a lookout on the Secrets Discord server for updates. When I know, I will post a video about it. Sin Touch Deathwalker. Now this is my favorite mount from the Shadowlands and you know ya boy is gonna get it. It requires you to get all dungeons on mythic level 15 difficulty within the time limit in the Shadowlands season 1. Voracious Gorger. 
This mount requires you to do Glory of the Shadowlands Hero Achievement, which requires you to do a bunch of dungeon achievements on Mythic difficulty. There are no mounts to be dropped from Castle Nathria, you can only get the Rampant Screecher from Glory of the Nathria Raider. There are a few PvP mounts you can get in Shadowlands, such as Deathbringer's Flayedwing. This mount is awarded for doing the Deathbringer World PvP achievement, which for some reason right now is not in the game anymore. It would require you to kill 50 players of each covenant, complete the Trials of Zosorg 10 times within Shadowlands while in the War Mode, complete each of the Zosorg World Quests at least 20 times, and earn 1000 honor in every Shadowlands zone. Vicious War Spider, there's one for Alliance and one for the Horde, you will get these by doing rated PvP content in Shadowlands Season 1. Sinful Gladiator Soul Eater, rewarded for getting Gladiator in Shadowlands Season 1. And now for the only mount from Torghast, the Corridor Creeper, which you will get by finishing Layer 8 of the Twisting Corridors. And now we will be going through the mounts that you will get from some unconventional means, such as puzzles and treasures. Swift Gloomhoof. First thing you will need for this mount is the Dreamcatcher. First step to get the Dreamcatcher is to go to these coordinates uh, at this location west of Ternasite in Ardenwild, at the platform with the broken cart with a wooden stick next to it, and on the ground you can see a cracked soul web, which when you loot it will give you the broken soul web. Next step requires you to have done the quest outplayed, so that Elder Gwenna will be at the Glitterfall Basin. This quest is the last quest in the Tricky Spigans side quest line, which you can start at these coordinates with the quest Ages Echoing Wisdom. But after you have done all of that, you will be able to talk to the Elder at the Glitterfall Basin, and now you will need to enchant it, so you need to make your way to the heart of the forest, in the Nightfey Covenant Sanctum. If you're Nightfey, you can come inside and ask Isera to enchant the thing, otherwise, if you're not Nightfey, just ask a guard outside and he will ask Isera to come out to talk to you. After this is done, you will go to these coordinates, and this is where the mob named Nightmare patrols, and this is the middle point of her patrol route, and you will use the Dreamcatcher, which will give you a buff, and now you will be phased into the shadowy version of Ardenwild, and now you can fight the mob, and then, after killing her, you will get your mount. Shimmer Mist Runner You will have to fight a mob named Scheisger at Mistwild Tangle in Ardenwild at these coordinates. But to engage him in a fight, you will have to go through a maze in a specific path that I will leave on the screen and in the description below. After you engage and beat him, you can mount the Shimmer Mist Runner. Wild Seed Cradle This mount requires you to collect a few items and merge them into one and then turn that in to Twinkle Star. Here are the coordinates to the items and to Twinkle Star. After you do this, you will get a buff that will allow you to loot the Cache of the Moon, which will give you the mount. Ascended Sky Main. There are 5 Whispers in Bastion that must be activated by 5 players within 5 minutes of each other, which will spawn the rare Ascended Council. Here are the coordinates for the Whispers and for the Ascended Council. Silver Wind Larian. For this mount, the first thing you will need to do is get the Crystal Mallet of Heralds, for which you will need to find 50 Anima Shards in Bastion, Necrotic Wake and Spires of Ascension, and turn them into Forger Light Hephasius. I will leave the coordinates for all the shards in the description below. After you collect them all and make the mallet, you will make your way to these coordinates, which is the Whisper of the Silver Wind, which will give you the mount. By the way, shard progress is account wide. Sun Dancer. The first thing you will need for this mount is a Sky Strider Glider, which you can make if you join the Kyrian Covenant and unlock the blueprint for it from the Trial of Wisdom. But I suggest just getting it off the auction house. Go to the Ancient Memorials, coordinates on the screen, and click on it to get the Sun Dancer's Blessing. Go to these coordinates and wait for the rare to appear. When he does, use the glider to glide towards him and then interact with him when you can. It will need to be soothed fast, so click it a lot because it will damage you. After that, he will land you, you can talk to him and fight him and you will get the mount. Sin Runner Blanche. This mount requires you to give 6 different items on 6 different days to Dead Blanche in Enmire area of Revenger. She will spawn at these coordinates every few hours. The best way to get her is to join a party that found her or just join a raid that's waiting for her to spawn. When she spawns, you will have a few minutes to give her one of the six items. The items are eight handfuls of oats that you can find around Saldine's farm in Westfall, grooming brush that is given you by Snicker C at these coordinates in Revenger, four sturdy horseshoes that can be found around the eastern roads of Revenger, a bucket of clean water which you can get by getting the empty bucket behind Snicker C, the guy who gave you the brush, and filling it up in either Ardenwield or Bastion. 
a comfortable saddle blanket that will be sold to you by Tatru at these coordinates in Revender with 30 meat, the kind of meat changes every week, and 3 Dread Hollow apples from Mims at these coordinates in Revender. I suggest getting all 6 of these items first and then just turning them to Blanche daily. Silky Shimmermouth sold by Master Clerk Salron at these coordinates in Ardenwild for 5000 anima and it requires you to do Ardenwild's stage achievement. There is no set rotation for this achievement so it will take a while but what you wanna do is complete every play in the Star Lake Amphitheater. Nightfay players will have to talk to Dapperdu at the Star Lake Amphitheater and he will summon one of the 7 rares. You don't need to be Nightfay for the mount though, just to summon the mobs, the kills will still be counted even if you're not Nightfay. And that's it, that's all the mounts you can get from the Shadowlands so far. The Plague Ball dungeon mount is still a secret and has eluded the community so far but I have no doubt that we will be able to get it soon enough. For now, that's it for me, a bit of a longer video, time steps and chords will be all in the description below. This has been your boy and I will see you in the next one, peace.